Hey guys, okay, I'm playing GM Italic again, this time in the five minute pool. So we just played in the three minute pool and he was experiencing some connection issues and I ended up flagging him. So now we're doing a much more civilized time control, five minutes each. So maybe this will produce a higher quality game. Looks to me like he's still lagging though. Yep, more lag issues from him. Hmm. So we got a Queen's Gambit decline. Oh, it's another Regozin. I remember the name of this opening this time, guys. Let's take. And then go Bishop G5. Uh, I'll play the sharp move again, Bishop H4. Again, I don't know a lot of theory in this line, but you know it worked out reasonably well last time, so. Let's try to keep the train going. I think here I'm supposed to play knight d2, actually. Is that a move? I think it is. Let's do it. Yeah, because if he takes on c3, he would win a pawn, but I don't think it's like that good for him to play that way. Here, let's go queen c2. I'll just try to deny his bishop the f5 square. Seems like a good idea. Makes sense the way he's playing it. He has the bishop pair now. Which way do I want to castle? It's a tough call. Not entirely sure which would be the best way. Let's castle queen side. I'm going to play a quick uh, king b1 and try to hide my king. Because I think he's going to go queen side too, unless he keeps his king in the center. Let's play king b1. He could he does go long. Really like to play g4 if I could. Maybe just knight f3 now. I can bring the knight to e5. I feel like bishop f5 would help me too. Let's play rook c1. I think my bishop stands a better chance of being useful on the C file than the D file at the moment. So now I might try to go bishop f5. Still though, I can't really do that because he can take on C3. Hmm. Strategically complex game. D2, knight E2. Let's go knight A4. See if he'll trade with me. Knight C4 is annoying. Let's hide the king. This is an irritating knight, I'm not gonna lie. I don't wanna take it, because then he would have two bishops versus my two knights. Vitalik is very experienced. Okay, maybe now bishop f5. Seems like a good time for it. Knight d6, yeah, just drops it back. Let's go here. So he's going to stick the knight on e4. a3, yeah. a3 is probably okay. In the bishop d6, I may play knight e1, is what I'm thinking. It's kind of audacious, but this knight is poorly placed. I'd like to maneuver it or trade it for the knight on e4. That would be good. Wow, he's going to sack. I was not really expecting that. I saw that he could try that, but I didn't think it was good. Check. So he comes in with check. Okay, so here's the question. Can I play king b2 or do I have to play queen a2? Queen a2 he can swap and then take on f2. I'll have three pawns. My structure is shattered. So that doesn't look good. I'm going to do this one. 
He can't easily get his rook into the fray. Unless he does that move. <laughs> but that should make it easier for me to defend, right? Right? I think I can do that. We'll find out shortly. But if he plays b6, I have queen b3. I have this move in defense. I think. Yeah. He can still pick off a bunch of pawns. Like now we can trade and he can still take on f2 after that. But I don't think it's as bad as it could have been. I do expect him to trade queens. I don't think he'll do anything else. Yep, now he'll take on f2. Okay, let's bring this guy here. g4 seems like a good move. Let's take check and then trade and then undermine his knight so I can get at this f6 pawn. Check. Okay. Do I think I can win this in time? Sure would be nice. Going to bring my knight over to f4. It's defended on that square. And I'll also be hitting d5. I think I'm winning now. But technique will be required. Okay. Now I definitely think I'm winning. Hmm. Let's just take that. As long as I make sure I don't let him play b4 easily and connect these pawns, I should be good. Uh, just as I said that, I let that happen. <laughs> hmm. Okay, bring this over to defend. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm still winning. Check. Check. Okay, there. He checks on b2. I go king c4. Yeah, that should be still winning. Check. These pawns are goners. He can play king b8, but I just play rook a4. Yeah, and he resigned. Okay, so I was able to round up the endgame win. Let's have a look. So Bergozin, I finally got it. Ingrained in my head, <laughs> the Rogozin variation. So bishop h4. Ironically, I saw one of uh, Chess Explained, Kristoff's games, the other day, and he also had this position from the white side, and he played bishop takes f6, and he also commented that he doesn't really know too much about this line. So I don't know if this is just like a common uh, gap in people's d4 knowledge. It's, it's really, honestly, I think because the Rogozin is just not a very popular line. So I've never had any urge to study it in that much depth. I can't even recall when I faced this line OTB. Maybe it's just like luck of the draw, but yeah, I haven't faced it much. And I think knight d2 is the move in this position. Because if I defend with queen c2, bishop f5 could be annoying. And he's threatening knight takes g3. So knight d2, and if he takes twice on c3, like let's say something like this, I play rook c1, I have excellent play for the pawn. If he gets greedy, I can win c7, um, and I'll play e3 and such. Again, I'll have great play. So he just nabs the bishop pair. All of these moves seemed pretty normal. It's possible I could develop in some more purposeful way. I think castling queenside is correct. I'm not sure about knight f3. I don't, I don't think this was a good plan in retrospect, because the knight was just misplaced on that square anyways. 
computer says I should play a3 directly. Yeah, I need to come up with a good plan here. It's not easy with him having the bishop pair and not a lot of weaknesses. The h6 pawn is weak, so it seems normal to like double up somehow and attack down the h-file. But it's kind of a committal strategy to do that, and he can defend h6 so easily. So I will need something better against this variation. I did not win this game because of the opening. So it seems pretty level this whole way. Him maneuvering the knight to e4 was good. He had a pretty nice time advantage too. A3, and you know, I saw he could do this, but I kind of figured Check. at the very least I could play queen a2, and Check. we would have this endgame. But um, it's probably good I didn't go for this endgame, at least in this form. My pawns are loose. Um, it just seems less coordinated. Also, I, I don't win as C6 pawn either <laughs> compared to the game. So, yeah, he's just got a, a mass of pawns and very few weaknesses. Clear edge black, according to the engine. So I think it was crucial that I played king b1. Now it says his best move is this. Because if I play this, I bet c5 is good now. Uh-huh. Now he won't lose the c pawn. Yeah, so he probably should have uh, flicked in the move queen b4 check. And see how that made me play. I don't know if I would have played king a1 or a2. If king a2... Yeah, he might be able to do this. Then again, why couldn't he do that after king a1 as well? Knight takes f2, yeah, he can. Hmm. Check. Yeah, in this endgame, once we get a pair of knights off the board, is looking a little bit better for white compared to the previous version where he retained his knight. But still, black should be doing fine. I'm guessing with c5 that he underestimated this knight takes c5 response. Because his whole idea with c5 is he's trying to lift the rook, I think. Like, if I take with the pawn, I believe the idea is rook c6 and try to come over here. And get my knight to budge so he can mate me down the a-file. But knight takes c5 is a timely defense. Or actually, moving the queen here is a timely defense, I should say. I played queen b3. Ah, computer doesn't like that as much as queen a4. What is the difference? This is kind of what happened in the game, though. So what's wrong with queen b3? Huh. Check. It prefers this position with the knight on a4. Maybe because the knight on a4 can come to c3 later and attack d5. Whereas I could see this knight being misplaced. I guess that's not entirely surprising. g4. Hmm. Maybe he should have played knight g4. That would hold f6 and also keep an eye on the e3 pawn and blockade my two doubled isolated pawns. Yeah, I think knight g4 is a better option. Check. Once I was able to undermine him like so, then the position became good for me. Looks like I could have done that even earlier. The engine says that's such a strong idea, I should just do it right away. Check. Like take and let's say he takes with the king. Now knight fd2. Still trying to get at that f6 pawn. Because if I don't create targets here and attack his pawn weaknesses, he's going to be able to cover everything if he gets a couple more tempos, like bringing his king to the center, for instance. And I might just be at the mercy of him slowly advancing his pawns. So I need to strike now while he's still a little uncoordinated. So g4. Check. Yeah, these exchanges occurred. Check. This does look like close to a winning position for white. His pawns are just dropping. I thought he might play like this move. Looks a little more stubborn. Hold the f6 pawn. And then maybe I could go after his d5 pawn. Like, I could play rook f5. Again, it seems like white is close to winning, but... That would require a finer display of technique from me. How is my technique here? King c2, I guess, is more accurate. Just run the king to the center. Still, though, I don't think I ever blew it at any point. This was a nice maneuver. Knight d3 and coming to f4. My, my next goal is just to round up his g3 pawn. 
I mean, if I can round the G3 pawn up without any, without incurring any material loss, then you know, I'm winning. Like now, I'm definitely winning. I did not see b4. Just turned out it didn't matter. But yeah, his idea is this, and then he gets to check, check and pick up the knight. Even this might be winning for white, but I'm not sure. So check. Yep, yeah, looks like check. he just ran out of steam check. here. I'm gonna round up the pawns. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that Rogozin game, and please feel free to leave me any feedback in the comments. Hope you guys have a good Monday. See you later.